Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Jules Leahy. Today I'm gonna give a slide guitar lesson on how to play Cause We've Ended As Lovers. This is my personal favorite Jeff Beck song. We just put a video out of my band performing this, which has been getting a lot of great feedback. So thank you guys so much for checking that out. Um, in the comments for that video, Larry Scott asked, I hope there's a video lesson coming on this. So here you go. So this song is in the key of C minor. And right off the bat, there's a really cool thing about playing in C minor. Um, it, we're in open E. So we're both not in the key of E, and we're not in a major key here. So we're doing, you know, this helps get out of just sort of like playing blues in one box position, you know, in an open tuned guitar. We're really having to play, you know, this just takes us out of like, we got to think here. We got to know what we're doing more than maybe, you know, uh, and I love... 12 bar blues in any key, you know, but this is simply put, this is not that. Um, this is a, a, a sort of a next step above that, you know. So this song starts out with these beautiful volume swells. Um, and I'm taking care of those with my volume pedal that my foot is playing, right? Jeff was doing this on a Telecaster on the original recording. He's doing this, and whenever he's playing it live, you know, he, if he's playing a Strat, he's always doing his volume swells with his pinky wrapped around the volume, right? So that, that right there is a distinct difference of how this is done. I'd say the same effect is created, but you know we're technically doing this two different ways. And the first bent note is bending up from a C to a D and releasing that bend. Now, controlling this bend is super important. Let's just talk about this for a sec. I'll play it and it's well, yeah, let me just play it a couple times and we'll, we'll get into this, okay? I like to do this from the 13th fret of the B string up to the 15th fret like this. So these are subtle, you know, um, well, subtle might not be the right word. They're handled delicately. You know, it's not, um, you'll notice also, at least when I'm listening to the original, that there's not a ton of vibrato on those first few notes. This is really interesting. Try to restrain yourself, okay? Don't go like this. It's not this. Right? It's not like, <laughs> it's not wailing. It's it's not like, you know, it, yeah, it's not wailing and sobbing. It's it's much more, uh, it, it's still, there isn't vibrato on those first notes. Um, you can put vibrato on the notes if you want, but I don't hear that when I'm listening to Jeff. So that's something that I tried to do in my performance, right, is just not overdo the vibrato anyway. We're zooming way in with a magnifying glass here. This mostly, you know, <laughs> you can do this however you want. But when I'm listening, that sort of detail is very important to me. Um, so when you're practicing, you know, hopefully now that sort of thing, you're, you're paying attention to that level of detail. So that's repeated a few times, the sort of C to D bend. And you can add, you know, an E flat. You can go to the third. You can go... add those little notes right above and below um then to get into the verse we play g f e right that's the sus thing <laughs> then that whole intro is repeated we do that same bent note you know that uh through the band has now entered and now the melody comes in and i want to just show you guys how to play the melody 
it's um it's really awesome in this open tuning i think there are some great things that will help maybe break out of the box like i was saying in the intro but here is the melody So it starts out D, C, C. And now down to the E flat. So that's at the ninth fret of the G string, G sharp string, you know, third string. So D, C, C, 10, 8, 8 on the high E. 9, 8 on the G string. And then we come down to the A-flat major 7 chord, and we hit B-flat to A-flat on the high uh, E string. This is fret 6 to 4. Now, conveniently right below that on the B string is the next melody note. So this second part of the melody is like this. Now, I did this little, uh, pardon me, I did this little, you could go like this, you could go, you could go, you know, there's all sorts of little ways of making it sound like you in there. So um, maybe start copying me 100% and then see what comes out of, you know, ways that you like to play. But just to show you that, you know, this is, there's, there's room for expression the entire time we're playing this melody. Then we come down to the F minor chord. And we go G, F, F. And I love this, down to the fourth string. So that's another, yeah, in the original, Jeff is doing this thing, he's got an open G string. So he would play his G string, which sounds this. And then he would come back and do one of those behind the nut. He would bend the note up a little bit. Um, we can't quite do that, you know? So I, I, I like to imitate that by doing something like this. Okay. Now the second time through, same melody, um, so same exact notes. And what I like to do is not do it exactly the same both times around. Leave a little bit of room for development the second time. So I intentionally play the first time, uh, I guess simpler, just a smidge simpler, so that I, you know, there's room to grow. I can just sort of, like the first time I might go like this, now second time through I'm going to embellish a little bit It's not too much. You don't, it's the same song. <laughs> so just a little bit more, you know, just, a, just stretching it out a little bit more. This, this might sound like, yeah, I get it, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to explain this because uh, this, this is really how you take like one idea, that one melody, and get more out of it. Don't just play it a second time. Sprinkle in a little bit more. Tell us a little bit more of the story, okay? So now we come up to the B section, which is a really cool, um, really interesting. We get this D over C chord, so we've got this Lydian sound. And this presents kind of a funny thing on slide because of the tuning. It's a little inconvenient. Uh, I like to play it down here on the fourth string like this. This is starting on the G, so the third fret, and we go like this. We go three, five, three. 
So it's like. Uh, see, it's it's a little weird because of the tuning, right? This is easier to play. This part, anyway, is easier to play in a standard tuned guitar. But nothing that we can't get through with a little bit of work and a little bit of conscious effort here. So also, I think in the video, I specifically actually went like this. I, I went up into the D from below. So I went like. Okay. And now I was just uh, leaving my volume pedal all the way down. It was a little bit more like, it was a little less, I, I really like to play this very uh, dynamic E, you know, with, with a lot of dynamics. So I usually express it a little bit more like this. See how, you know, it's a little more storytelling mode there than just teaching. <laughs> uh, so that's something that I, you know, I, and I'm going into much more detail on volume pedal stuff in a separate video just for that. But if you watch me and listen to me play and you think, oh, there's some, there's this dynamic thing happening, know that that's going on with my foot. Okay. That's what's going on. My foot is doing that so that you know, I, I've just sat here and practiced, and I, I, it's a big part of my sound. So if notes are breathing in this way that, like, they might not be breathing for you, try getting a volume pedal. Okay, that's, that's the trick. Um, anyway, back to the bridge. So melodically, this is not super hard to play. Um, it's just kind of weird down here for the bottom half of it. And what I like to do for the second half of the bridge is simply take it up an octave and go like this. It's a little easier up there. Um, and just like I was saying with the verses, instead of just playing it exactly the same way, it helps split it up, you know, helps, helps develop it, helps get it going somewhere, right? So at that point, now the song, uh, we basically, it's A, B, A, B. So we've got, you know, verse, then the bridge, and then we're going to do the verse again. And to develop the verse this next time, I'll do some other little things. Like, I think I went like this. I think I went... <laughs> Now this is cool. We know how the song goes, so we can get into, you know, I'm really expressing it. Um, the way Jeff Beck plays, he's this rock and roll rebel. You know, he does, he does, he, he's showing you every little way he can express a melody, pinch a string, um, you know, this sort of like Pac-Man, uh, this, this. You don't want too much of that. It's kind of silly, but I, I really love going. So now I'm, I'm, you know, really ramping up everything because I want the salt, you know, we're going somewhere. This is not just, this is not just like this. We, we, we need ups and downs, okay? So just playing your melody, sort of embellishing some of those parts on this second time around, it's a great way to, you know, do it slightly different way yet again. Um, B section, the bridge, same thing, you know, just, just keep playing the melody, but uh, just try to take a little bit more from it, you know, get get a little bit more, especially with the slide, like I love. You can fall off, right? You might go like this. You know, just 
consider the following. That was my, the Bill Nye thing. I, I always love, consider the following. I would say consider all of those options. Go back and watch my video of me playing this. Now that you've seen me teach and sort of talk about it, go back and watch and listen to exactly how the melody is expressed. You know, this, this will hopefully help you understand what you're hearing when you just watch and hear me play, okay? Now, getting to the solo. And um, the difference in the solo chord progression is that now, instead of ending with the C sus to C, the chord progression is C minor, one minor, two A flat major seven, to flat six major, and then two four minor, F minor. And now in the solo, we go from the F minor to the five chord, to G seven. And this is where, you know, uh, there's so much cool stuff you can do on this G chord. We're just making it altered every way that we can. You know, it could be, it could be um, sharp 11, it could be flat, um, flat nine, you know, we, any alteration on that. That's like a real moment that we're going to dig into. And, and there's, there's real friction that we're about to release and resolve on that next one chord, the C minor. So... I'm always thinking Aeolian. Um, listen to Aeolian. Here's C Aeolian. This is the world that I'm operating in in the video. And whenever I'm thinking about, you know, just playing this, I'm doing stuff like this. Okay, so it's not just like blues. I am not going like this. There's like a little bit of blues guitar in there, but it's not. Right? It's not Dwayne Allman or Derek Trucks. This is different. Um, we love Dwayne Allman and Derek Trucks, but this is different. We're not doing those licks on slide. You know, this is a different type of playing. So, um, something that I rely on a lot in this context too is, and you can hear it at the end of the, you know, when I get back to that C minor chord, I really rely on that C minor triad. I love doing things like this. So that's starting on the five, starting on the G. And I'm sliding up to C, the root, and then playing two, flat three, D and E flat. So this whole line, and you know, this really outlines all of C. You know, there's more notes that we could play, but this is just, you know, if you can do this down here, Later on in your solo, something I did is I just moved that up an octave. Um, and it really has an impact if you can get us to that point and then you're just, you know, clearly outlining these chords like this. So down here. Now, if you do that same thing up top, it gets a little harder. At least on this mule caster, we run out of frets. So my SG has more frets once you get way up here. But if you do that same sort of thing up here on a mule caster, you just have to really watch your pitch once you go off the fretboard. In that video, I got my pitch was, it sounded pretty good. I, I got, you know, I really went for it with some of those notes and they sound really good. So I would encourage you to try some time, you know, way up in the Netherlands up here, uh, you know, way up where we run out of frets. Try seeing how well in tune you can play something like this. Because it's really exciting if you can do that sort of thing. And then once you're up that high too, now there is this knack to, you know, it, it is really cool to come up here and just kind of play some like ripping position based licks. In that case, it would be like this. 
Okay, so, you know, I, I'm not, um, um, I don't just think, oh, well, now I'm going to play a bunch of position-based licks. <laughs> it's just you kind of get away with it more at this point. Once, once you're way up high, and if we're really ripping towards the climax of your solo, you know, w w you don't need to, like, think too hard about this. You can just let it rip. Um, so then after letting it rip, the cue for the band, and this is the original, this is uh, actually a Les Paul lick that Jeff Beck loves. Jeff Beck loves Les Paul. And so this is a little nod of the cap to Les Paul. He does this lick on the F minor chord, and this cues the band to go back to the verse. They play the C sus, C, and then we go into the bridge after this. The solo continues, but that lick, is really cool. It, it starts on the high G at the 15th fret of the E string, and you go like this. And then and that's, um, you know, Les does that in a few recordings, but um, it might be How High the Moon, I think he does that. He, he just does that. It, Tiger Rag, I think Les Paul does that. And it's just a, you know, just a little clever, smart aleck, funny, funny lick, you know. But that's definitely a Les Paul nod. Anyway, that gets us out of the solo section and into the bridge. And after the bridge, we conclude by doing the intro. And it's the entire intro where we go one time through the chords with this. And then that goes through one whole time, the very last time with the band. Oh, the very last time with the band, we go way up high and we go like this. So, you know, it's like we, we totally end where we started. It's like this, you know, we kind of at the end, we're like wondering what the heck just happened. Wow. <laughs> nice way of just sort of putting a little ribbon on the story. And, you know, hopefully there's five minutes of epic rock and roll for you. Um, but anyway, that that is how you play this on slide guitar. That's how I play it on slide guitar anyway. And um, I hope that this helps you just sort of break out of the blues box. You know, you don't just have to play blues when you're in open tuned slide guitar. In fact, I, I think, you know, we, we know that you can play blues in open tuned slide guitar. So let's see what else you can play, right? But thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you guys for all the great video. Uh, thank you for all the great feedback on our live performance of this song. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorites, and if you, you know anything about me, I love Jeff Beck a lot. So it's really great that you know I could dedicate this performance to him and that we can all learn a lot from it. But um, thank you so much for checking this out. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. We're putting videos like this out all the time. We'll see you in the next one.